tell us about what you do. You're the CEO and co-founder of Exozyme, which is an AI protein design tool. And so I don't know how much people are aware that proteins are something you can design, that humans now have that power. So yeah, what does that mean? Yeah, that's true. Um, proteins you don't only use to bulk up and eat. Um, <laughs> But actually, the reason why we need to eat proteins, they don't only make muscle fiber, but they make, they are responsible for basically all the important chemistry that's going on in our bodies and basically every other organism in this world. Um, the most basic chemical task that they fulfill is catalyzing reactions in your body. Like, for example, there's a biocatalyst, which is basically a protein that acts as a chemical catalyst that takes CO2 out of your bloodstream, transports it into your lung, releases it as in gas, gaseous form so that you can breathe out. And every chemical reaction going on in your body, you know, it has to work at 35, 36 degrees Celsius which is not what most catalysts do that we use in the chemical industry. Um, so these biocatalysts, they can do with very small amounts of energy. So this is one protein. And the other type of protein that's used a lot, especially in pharma, um, are antibodies, which most people will know from the news about COVID um, because our bodies naturally build antibodies against diseases, which basically are an adapter um, so that the immune system can recognize and kill um, diseases. Yeah, very good example. And so there's, I mean, I don't know if you roughly know like the number of different kinds of proteins. I guess if you consider all the different <laughs> kinds of antibodies, you're talking about billions of yeah, yeah. different configurations of proteins in each of our bodies. Yeah, exactly. So the nice thing about proteins from a machine learning standpoint is that they have a very simple way of uh, for describing them. Um, namely, it's just a chain um, of 20 letters. Each letter stands for an amino acid and you just string them up and that's kind of it. But because it's 20 letters and we all know combinatorics, if you go to lengths like 300, 400, you already have more possibilities than atoms in the universe. Mm. This is the standard metaphor that everybody uses <laughs> exactly. for combinatorics. <laughs> yes. um, so, um, so there's a lot of combinations. That, this means you can do a lot of very different things by seemingly tiny changes, like sometimes just exchanging one letter, one amino acid, um, can have extreme effects on, say, the speed of catalysis for a biocatalyst. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, small changes in the amino acid structure could mean either that the catalyst that is required for doing some kind of important work in our body, yeah. um, it, if there's some genetic mutation, uh, sometimes that genetic mutation will not impact the functionality of the, the protein, but that's the rare case because most of the time you change one of these genetic instructions that encodes that sequence of amino acids that you just described, and that will typically make some kind of effect, and uh, usually that would be a bad effect because <laughs> of all of the possibilities out there, um, it's, it's, it's probably going to negatively impact um, the capability of that protein. But I guess then every once in a while, and this is what allows evolution to happen, yeah. By chance, it ends up being better, and maybe that catalyst works a little bit better, or we're able to detect an infection a little bit more uh, efficiently, yeah. and then that individual is more likely to survive, and that mutation goes forward into future generations. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what, what you just uh, hinted upon, evolution, like in machine learning, people have been around for long enough, they've heard of this old method of um, evolutionary algorithms, this is exactly the idea of having a code that you change randomly and then maybe you get something that's better for the purpose you're interested in. This is exactly what's happening in organisms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, these al evolutionary algorithms are very cool. Um, but uh, I guess with the, getting back to the AI protein design yeah. idea, 
is that allowing evolution to figure out uh, maybe better combinations is, you know, that's just by random. <laughs> and obviously we can't be then selectively breeding people to mm. have that protein be more likely in the population or something. Um, and so does AI protein design, when you're doing that at Exozyme, are you typically trying to recreate proteins that already exist or are you sometimes designing new proteins that maybe have better functionality? It's, it's mostly the latter because in like, as you say, uh, there's no chance ever um, to design what's going on in human bodies in the sense of changing human bodies. I mean, there's gene therapy in the making, na na na, but that's not the, not the majority of things that people are interested in when they design proteins. The majority of things that people are interested in is they take out the biocatalysts from the host organism and the host organism could be just bacteria or yeast, sometimes plants, sometimes animals, yes. But then um, you're interested in the, in the chemical reaction this catalyst catalyzes um, for making certain chemicals, for example, in an industrial setting. So um, BASF, the biggest chemical company, but also many pharma companies they use biocatalysts as production routes. And why are they interested in this? Number one, um, very often they get much better performance using biocatalysts. They don't get as much waste product, for example. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, they can run these reactions at much more sustainable, um, in much more sustain sustainable environments, like lower temperature, um, nice solvents like water they don't need aggressive solvents or anything so this is just um, from an economical standpoint it's very very nice to be able to produce stuff with biocatalysts um, this is one thing the other thing is antibodies um, the antibodies that we naturally build as um, humans or mammals are of a, of a kind that works for many, many diseases, but it does not work, for example, for, can, for many cancers, because cancers are really just our own tissue that's misbehaving. So it's very hard to distinguish a cancerous part of your body from a healthy part of your body. And this is where normal antibodies that we naturally design with our biology, they don't work. And people from pharma companies come in and say, well, we have to do something more advanced. We have to design artificial antibodies in order to combat these types of cancers.